What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick video, I'll show you how to optimize Silent Hill F for the best performance. This video is only going to cover the in-game graphics options, and if you'd like extra performance, check the description down below for related guides. With that being said, the first time you boot up the game, it should choose one of the three quality presets to get you the best or at least okay performance on your system. By default, the game chose Balanced for me at 2K with a 3080 Ti, and that puts me comfortably at around 50-ish FPS. Not the best. If I pause the game, head across to Options and Graphics, inside of here we can change a few options to get some better performance. At the very top, Screen Mode, we can change this between Full Screen, Windowed and Borderless Windowed. I usually play on Borderless Window, just so I can tab out and things like that. Full Screen should give you slightly better input latency and things like that, but on most modern systems it doesn't really matter. Right below this you'll see Resolution, this should obviously match your display and you can only change this when you're in Windowed Mode. Frame Rate Limit, we have 30 30 and 60, as well as No Limit. You'll obviously be choosing No Limit to uncap your FPS. VSync should definitely be turned off unless you're getting screen tearing, but this can only be enabled in full screen, and Panini Projection is only available for ultra-wide screens. It basically just stops objects at the side of your screen from being curved, and instead makes them properly straight. It's a weird effect to explain, but if you have an ultra-wide, you can play with this. Brightness setting we'll skip over, and then we have Preset, which changes all of the options below this point. I've benchmarked everything individually, but let's start off with the preset over here. If I change it to quality, I drop all the way down to 30 FPS, but as you can see, that's the frame rate limit. Whenever you change the preset, the frame rate limit changes as well. So uncapping, quality gives me around 45 FPS, 47. Balance moves me up to around 53. And finally, performance around 62. Now, I'm not too sure why they've chosen these exact settings, but they have. There's actually something we can do for a free FPS boost that basically doubles what we're getting here with really low effort. Head into your options, graphics, scroll down past your preset, and eventually down here you'll find upscaling or anti-aliasing. We've got FXAA and TAA, which are both just regular anti-aliasing methods. So for example, here's FXAA at native resolution, 72 FPS. You might notice it's a bit grainy, so if we switch to TAA, it should be a lot smoother. Performance is at around 70 FPS. This looks pretty good, but preferably if we change it to TSR, our first upscaler, performance, 62 FPS, balanced 60, quality 57, and performance, somewhere around the same, 60, we can actually get way more from our system by changing this to either FSR or DLSS. FSR should be available for every graphics card and DLSS only for NVIDIA GPUs. For these, we have the same options, but if I start on quality with either FSR or DLSS, you'll notice there's a huge FPS boost to around 84. Moving down to balance gives us around 90, performance 95, but obviously I'll be playing on quality, which gives us a huge boost in performance with the fewest visual artifacts, glitches, and things like that. The same goes for FSR. Now I'm not too sure why neither of these were chosen by default, but FSR or DLSS on quality should give you a massive FPS boost, keeping the quality the same, if not even better. Now I have benchmarked the rest of the options here. If you just want a quick boost, change the preset to probably balanced or performance, and set FSR or DLSS to quality or balanced with your FPS uncapped. This should give you a small boost. But if you'd like to run through things one by one, let's start off with screen percentage. Always leave this at 100%. Indirect lighting. We've got Lumen High, Epic, and Off. Off looks a bit weird, but it gives you an FPS boost. I'm at 88. Lumen High makes the game look so much better, but it drops us down to 79. And finally, Lumen Epic, 75. Now, while the FPS boost is nice, you're obviously taking away a huge amount of the atmosphere. If you'd like an easier to see game, Off is perfect. Otherwise, Lumen High is your only option here. Then, Reflections, we've got Off, SSR, Lumen High, and Epic, and obviously, whenever there's no reflections visible, your FPS should stay mostly about the same. But even for water, be it a puddle or a river, your FPS should change. With Off, I'm at 90, SSR, 89, Lumen High, 86, and finally, Lumen Epic, around 81. So there's a small performance hit here, and I'd recommend, if anything, playing with screen space reflections chosen here. Shadow quality does have a pretty big impact on performance. If we start off at low, I'm getting 86, medium 82, high, still 82, and finally very high, around 75, 76. So, for the most part, either play with low 
medium, or very high. You can skip high entirely. I'll probably be playing with the medium, if not low. Texture quality has basically no impact on performance. From low all the way through very high, it's basically a free quality boost without changing your FPS at all. The only thing this will affect is obviously the amount of VRAM used in your system. And for the most part, if you have a graphics card that's well above, say, 8 gigs of VRAM, you can leave this on very high and forget about it. High if you're around 7 or actually 8 gigs of VRAM. Medium if you're probably 6 through 8. And finally, low if you're anything below that. For me, as I've got 12 gigs of VRAM, I can comfortably leave this on very high. Assuming you've got more than enough and the game is not using all of it, you shouldn't have an FPS impact at all. Then shader quality, low, around 79, medium 75, high, around the same, and finally very high is the same once more. The only impact you'll see is between low and medium in terms of FPS, so I'll probably be leaving shader quality on low. Visual effects quality, I had 82 FPS at low, and anything above that, 78, so a drop of about 4. Maybe it's the fog effects, things like that, here's medium. And here's low, a small FPS difference with basically no visual impact at all. I'll leave this on low. The same goes for fight scenes and escape scenes, things like that, where there are effects, I didn't see a performance difference besides the obvious one here. Then post-processing quality, this has an incredibly small impact on performance from 82 at low to just 80 at medium and anything above that. So here's very high, for example, same FPS as medium. I don't see too much of a difference, but if you do, leave it on very high, otherwise low is fine. View distance quality, this doesn't affect performance at all, really, at least from my testing. Obviously, in certain scenes where you're seeing much further, that first one was low, we're now at a very high, at further distances, you'll see more of a difference as more objects are loaded in and things like that. I assume most of the impact will be VRAM. So if you've got plenty to spare, you can leave this on very high and forget about it. And the aliasing we've covered, motion blur has no effect on performance. It's only a visual thing. Personally, I do like this on here, but set this as you see fit. And finally, colorblind, obviously no effect there as well. Just make sure to check your frame rate limit is still set to no limit. And that's basically that. So with my optimized settings, I'm now sitting at around 80 FPS, which is fine for me. But if you'd like even more, I'd recommend changing your DLSS or FS from quality to balanced, and you'll see a big boost there. I'm now at around 90, and the game still looks just as good as before. A nice big boost, while the game still looks fantastic. Obviously, we can lower things further, but it does impact the graphics quality. So based on whatever you can run and your target FPS, you'll obviously come across a middle ground that works better for you. But of course, there are a few modifications that we can make to the game's engine, as this is an Unreal Engine 5 game. If you head across to, for example, Nexus mods and look for Silent Hill F, some of the most popular mods here are, of course, just engine.ini files, similar to other games that you can drop into your games folder that'll tweak your graphics and hopefully give you a boost in FPS. But these do usually have a pretty large impact on visuals, especially in something like this game here, and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it unless you're looking for more FPS and you're not comfortable with, hopefully, above 60. The only other pain point that I've seen is that whenever you're in a cutscene, your FPS will happily drop down to 30, even if it's just a little cutscene of you ducking under something, avoiding a monster's attack, and things like that. It can be very jarring to drop from 90 or 120 down to 30 in a very short cutscene for basically no reason at all. But yeah, that's really that. So, hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.